Hi guys, welcome to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we're back with the Lucian Complete Guide as promised. So, it's been taking some time for me to paint this guide because I've been playing a lot of ranked games. And not gonna lie, it hasn't been going too well because generally at the start of the season, my ranked games don't go too well. Don't know about you guys. But we're back here with the Lucian Guide. So Lucian, after the patch 2.4 update, is one of the best... Uh, ADCs, not necessarily in the ADC role. I still believe his uh, best role is mid lane, but we're going to be doing a guide for ADC because I don't really play mid lane unless I'm auto filled to mid. So he's still really good in the ADC role, just that his best role is at mid. And uh, he has really benefited from the new items in patch 2.4. He is, of course, a short ranged uh, caster style marksman, so he sort of has to get really close to people to do damage and he has to use his abilities in order to do damage not like someone like a Jinx who's just gonna do a lot of damage just by auto attacking and you don't necessarily have to use your abilities if you say run out of mana or something you're still useful but if Lucian runs out of mana he isn't gonna be too useful because he can't cast his abilities so his damage output is gonna be uh, really really low but without further ado let's jump into the practice mode and check out his skills and abilities and his leveling order, I'm sorry. So Lucian's leveling order is really simple. There's only really one way to go about it, which is to max Q, E, and then W. Of course, taking a point in ultimate whenever available. So we're going to take a point in Q at level 1. At level 2, honestly, there is an option between E and, and uh, W, sort of like how Ezreal has an option. I always take E because I like the extra mobility and the ability to follow up if my support engages, because level 2 fights are relatively common. Level 3, of course, you take your W, and then as said, you will max your Q, taking your ultimate when available, and then we continue maxing our Q, then we proceed on to max E, and then finally, we will max W. So that is how the leveling order goes. So we're going to cover his uh, skills and abilities of course and we're going to head over to the river um, as usual. So first up his Q, it's a laser. So uh, of course it's called piercing light. So something to note is that there are two zones here as you can see. The first zone with the circle and the second zone. Uh, there can see the lines extending out of the circle. So there has to be a target within the initial circle in order to, to launch the ability. So, for magic. example, I call it good he is at the edge of the zone, I can launch the ability. He's in the zone, I can launch the ability. But he, if he's out of the zone like this, I can't launch my ability. So there has to be a target in the first area. And the second half will show where it shoots so basically um, I can shoot like that the laser will pass all the way through and um, that's actually just wait for the cooldown to come back up and you can also of course pierce through enemies so if I hit this first target dummy it's gonna hit the guy at the back as well for the same amount of damage so now is a good time to mention his passive which is that he casts a double auto attack after each ability so this is his normal auto attack like that and when you cast your Q, boom, you get a double shot, like so. So essentially what it is, is it kind of increases your attack speed because you essentially put up a double basic attack in a very quick amount of time. And this also synergizes with Conqueror, things like Conqueror, things like uh, his E, things like Blade of the Rune King, so it does have a lot of synergies. Life. His W um, doesn't have to have a target, you can launch it um, even without a target. Basically, if it doesn't hit a target, it's going to explode at the max range, like that into a, in a cross formation. I'm going to remove the cooldown. If it hits a target, it will of course still explode in the cross formation. Of course, you can uh, hit targets with the sides of the cross as well, like that. You don't have to hit them right in the center. And if targets are behind, they might get hit as well at the side, uh, in front, behind. You know, basically, if it, if it gets hit by the cross, it gets hit. And if... It doesn't reach max range, it hits the first enemy, it's gonna explode in the cross as well. It doesn't explode at the max range, it explodes when it hits the first enemy, as you guys can see here. And if you guys notice, the enemies that are hit, they do have this bluish glow to them. So if you auto attack someone with the bluish glow, you're gonna gain movement speed. Like that. Some call it magic. 
Boom, movement speed. So you can't see the movement speed. There is an indicator at your feet. That blue uh, spinning circle is your movement speed. Now take note that this um, W movement speed can be propped by anybody, not just you. So if you hit someone with a W, your teammate attacks that person. You can uh, your movement speed will be propped and you can uh, run. So next is your E. It's a really short range dash, um, like that. A really short range dash. Of course, it can go over walls, but not every single wall. Some walls are a little bit too thick, but in general, most walls you should be able to go through as long as you're standing right at the edge. So you can go through this kind of walls, and of course you can go through you can go through majority of walls to be real honest. But of course you can go through some thick walls like these. You will just dash into the wall. You have to be at maybe here. Nope, it still can't go through. Yeah, at the very like this this part you can go through, but obviously this part you can't. You'll just dash into the wall. Uh, much like Vayne, you can also dash into the wall to cancel the animation, so if you want to do it uh, attack faster, you can do this and then auto attack to cancel the animation. Because you sometimes use your E just purely for damage output, not for mobility. Um, and if I remove the cooldown, every time you hit your passive light slinger, your double shot, it will reduce cooldown. As you can see, reduce cooldown, reduce cooldown, and it's back up. So, your ultimate is the culling. Now, this is a bit of a unique ultimate. It is the longest range ability you have. And basically, in whatever target direction you launch it, it's going to keep firing in that direction. Like that. So, if you move, it's still going to keep firing in that same direction. It's not going to change direction at all. However, you can actually reposition it with your E and with your flash. So, that is something to take note if you're trying to hit it onto the enemies, but you can't. And it also works with Proto Belt. Uh, I'm not going to show it off here because I don't have it at the moment, but it does also work with Proto Belt. And um, basically, uh, his main combo is like in lane, just for trading. You just Q auto, of course, and uh, W auto if you can, if it's a longer trade. If you want to so called go all in without your ultimate, you always start off with E because you want um, the cooldown to come up as fast as possible for your E when you activate all your passes. So you E auto. W auto, Q auto, and your E should be more or less back up. Now the other way to do it is you E auto, Q auto, and then W auto. The difference is that the order of the Q and the W is different. Now W gives you movement speed to chase or escape, whereas Q gives you more damage. So you gotta see the situation whether you want W for the chase because the enemies are starting to run because they're losing the trade, or do you want to get off Q and get more damage then then you can run away or or then you can use a W after that so the order is uh, honestly depending on the situation I use W first half the time and I use Q first half the time so it really depends and of course uh, if you've used everything already you can also finish off with the ultimate for the max amount of damage to all in and that is pretty much it for his skills abilities leveling order and so now we're gonna move on to his build now there is of course a new build for Lucian after patch 2.4 which is why I only wanted to make the complete get after patch 2.4 because if I did it at 2.3 it would kind of be a little bit invalidated. So here is the Lucian build. So first off, um, actually I don't normally go for Death's Dance, I normally go for Grand Angel. So first up, I was trying out the Death's Dance build. So first up is Essence Reaver. Uh, Essence Reaver is just the best item on Lucian. It gives you everything you want. It gives you a D crit and ability haste and then it also gives you the uh, the, the essence uh, flare ability which is whenever you cast an ability uh, it deals extra damage uh, based on your critical rate which of course will ramp up in the later stages of the game but it also gives you the mana siphon because Lucian is a, a mana hungry caster champion so you will uh, actually get mana back from this and this is really helpful for your for your mana and after building this as your first item you shouldn't really have too much mana problems at least not as bad as the previous patch then I like to go for infinity edge for the uh, more AD and the more crit and then Sorel does grudge instead of the moral reminder because uh, Instead of Grievous Wounds, you get this slow, the IC passive. So, of course, you get AD and Ability Haste as well. The IC passive um, actually allows you to slow enemies, which allows you to catch up to them and stay stick onto them as you're trying to kill them. And also, 
uh, it combos with your ultimate because if you hit the Serelda's Grudge, if you have the Serelda's Grudge and you ult, every single shot of your ultimate will slow. And you, you guys will see this later in the gameplay where you can see me slowing someone and hitting them with the ultimate, the entire ultimate just because they're slow and they can't escape unless they flash. And then I like to go for a Solari Charge Blade, which of course doesn't give any more AD because we have enough of that from the first three items, but instead gives uh, crit, attack speed, and ability haste. Now, if you guys notice, the, the stats that Lucian really wants is ability haste to cast more abilities, and of course AD. So crit and AD is the uh, uh, crit, no, not not crit and AD. Ability haste and AD is is what Lucian wants. And of course, since we're going for a crit build, we have three crit items with the Charge Blade, uh, making 100% crit whenever you cast an ability. And also giving you that true damage uh, when the enemies are low. And yeah. So of course as the last item we go for the Garden Angel. Just for uh, the revive. As well as the armor and even more AD. But of course as you guys saw just now. Another option is the Death's Dance. If there is no one. Uh, if you feel like you don't need the Garden Angel. You can also go for the Death's Dance. Now a, a drawback of this build is without Blade of the Rune King. You don't actually have a lot of healing. So... Um, some people still go for Ionian Boots of Lucidity, but personally, I don't do that anymore. With this new build, I go for the Gladness Greaves, because without the Blade of the Rune King, you only have the Gladness Greaves as well as the uh, the Hunter Vampirism for, for Lifesteal. So, I personally go for the, the Gladness Greaves um, in order to get the uh, healing that I need. Uh, if not, I'm not going to have enough sustain. And for your Boot Enchant... Um, of course, it's the normal options, Stasis, Quicksilver, and Proto Belt. The rest, um, not really the best for, for Lucian. Proto Belt is my go-to option uh, because of the extra mobility and the repositioning of my ultimate. Uh, I go for Quicksilver only if there are a lot of CC on the enemy team because Lucian, as I said, goes up close and personal. So uh, I will go for Quicksilver if needed, like if there's a Seraphine and, and a Mumu, um, which I can easily uh, QSS. Uh, multiple sources of uh, uh, crowd control that's not knockups. I'll go for QSS, but quite rarely. And I'll go for stasis if there are like two or more uh, backline threats. I mean, like, let's say there are two assassins, uh, or there's like let's say a Rengar and like a a Yasuo, ya a fat Yasuo who can easily uh, dash through to the backline and kill me. I will go for the stasis or the Zanyas. Uh, if not, I if not, I will always just go for uh, um, the proto belt if the conditions for stasis and quicksilver are not met. Now there is a variation to this build where you can go for charge blade as your second item and then third item go for the infinity edge and then go for Serelda's grudge as your fourth item instead. It's just reordering it but personally I find that this is the best order. The the combo of the essence weaver and the infinity edge gives you a lot of early game damage where you can then move on to go for the penetration as well as the slow and then you can follow it up with more uh, ability haste attack speed and crit rate and then a de final defensive item i find that that is the best way personally so of course for your runes you always want to go conqueror just because of how easily you stack q auto already gives you three stacks and then any other skill auto gives you max stacks of conqueror really easy really simple um no two ways about it there's nothing else that lucian would want to take for your second uh, rune, you always want to go Hunter Vampirism just because of the lifesteal. This build doesn't have any lifesteal uh, except the Gluttonous Greaves. And for some people who don't build Gluttonous Greaves, this is going to be your only form of lifesteal. So nothing else is really comparable to that. Now, of course, when it gets to the third uh, rune or the second minor rune, there are options here. I like to go for Hunter Titan for tenacity and health. But of course, you can also go for something like Adaptive Carapace if needed. It is, of course, better in lane and also... Um, just a useful rune in general, and whereas Hunter Titan takes some time to scale, and I wouldn't really take Bone Playing because it's too easily proc, especially in the bottling where there are a lot of ranged characters. And lastly, I like to go for Sweet Tooth, just of course with the extra healing and extra gold and extra mana. Of course, uh, you could of course go for Mana Flow Ban, but in general, Sweet Tooth is just better because instead of just giving you mana, it gives you um, health and gold as well. Uh, yeah, the only other option is Hunter Genius, but you have way uh, more than enough ability haste. This entire build, uh, without the Death's Dance, it actually gives you uh, equivalent to, I believe, about 42% CDR. So you have a lot of ability haste in this build. You have ability 25 ability haste from here, 15 from here, and another 25 from here. 
So that is more than enough ability haste. We don't need uh, any more ability haste than that. So with that out of the way, let's quickly move on to the gameplay. Alright, so here we are with the gameplay. But before that, if you guys enjoy what you're seeing so far, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, of course. So this is a really... Uh, really fun and interesting gameplay. We did really really well, we popped off this game but you know, we'll, we'll all see that in due time. So of course, obviously we go for a long sword start. And I like to work this bush at the beginning and I like to sort of set a trap and try to get off some early game damage onto my lane opponent to sort of win early game trades. Level 1 with your Q auto, you should be able to out trade more or less nearly everyone unless you take like 2 autos, autos from a Draven. Uh, or you, you go in by yourself and get hit by both the support and the AD carry. If you and your support go in together, normally you will win a level 1 trade just because of Lucian's passive. So, here in this game, uh, of course, we're just gonna we're just gonna try to poke... Uh, we're actually not gonna try to poke them out, we're just gonna try to get as much damage on them as possible because Seraphine and Varus is a very poke-heavy lane. Seraphine can poke with her Q and her E, Varus can poke e with, with his Q and his E, so... Here I'm going in trying to do as much damage as possible. Of course, as I said, I like to take E at level 2 just so I can dash in to do some damage. Uh, e is very useful for getting into range to actually do the damage because um, you know it's really difficult. It's really difficult to get into range to do damage, especially when uh, generally almost every other AD carry has longer range than you. So you're gonna really need your E to dash in to do the damage. Your E is honestly a very essential part of your damage output. You're gonna have to dash before you start your combo just to get off your passive uh, damage. You're not you're gonna be doing not not too good damage. So your E is is really a damaging spell as well. Here, Nami is in trouble. Uh, gets hit by Seraphine. I managed to trade the Nami uh, and the Seraphine. Nami for the Seraphine, I should say. And me and the Varus each get a kill. Of course, we are both low, so uh, nothing too much comes of it as of yet. Here, of course, Varus can can poke me uh, again. <laughs> so I'm not gonna be too greedy uh, for the minion. I'm just gonna recall and taking note to step a little bit further back because you know Varus, of course, can uh, interrupt recalls very easily with his max range Q. So you always wanna stand a little bit further back uh, when you're facing uh, against a Varus. Now I would like to point out that our team, our team's team comp is pretty bad. Uh, it's a full AD team with no AP at, at all, except Nami, who doesn't really do damage, and there are no knockups uh, except for the Nami ultimate for the Yasuo to actually activate his ultimate on. Right, I believe that there is a plane flying by outside, so sorry about that. So here we're about to hit level five. Here I'm going in on them because I know I'm about to hit level 5. Here I hit level 5, cast my ultimate and I get the kill onto the Varus. Now this is a little trick you can do on basically nearly every AD carry. If you have an experienced lead compared to the other AD carry and you're very very close to hitting level 5, you will actually get passive experience. So if like, like there's a minion dying around you uh, or even if there isn't, if you're really, your level 4 bar is about to hit level 5, you can actually just go all in on them and you will get your ultimate mid fight. And of course this only works if you're higher experience than them. So in this case the Varus was about 2 thirds way to, uh, through level 4 to level 5 whereas I was like 99% way to level 5. I was basically just waiting for, to hit level 5 even if uh, no, I didn't get any uh, minion uh, deaths. I would still get passive XP and hit level 5 so you can actually just go in onto the enemy, uh, uh, enemy bot lane. And you will hit level 5 halfway through the fight and you will get your ultimate whereas they don't. And they are already locked up and stuck in the fight and they can really do nothing much to get out of it. So that's how I got the easy uh, fight over there, easy fight victory over there. Which allowed me to get enough gold to pick up my Essence Reaver. Uh, nearly hit the bubble there and we dodged the CC as well uh, from the Seraphine. There I just getting off like. Uh, my general combo. I take a little bit of damage in return, but I have a Nami who can heal me up, uh, whereas they don't. Here, Seraphine actually walks off to the side, so we're gonna have to, of course, try to catch her as she comes back to lane. Doesn't go the best, and we hit our ultimate there. Uh, the exhaust from the Nami basically saves our lives. <laughs> uh, saves my life, I should say. So here, of course, we have uh, priority on the dragon. 
uh, we did get the kill onto the Varus and the Seraphine as well at, uh, now and we have basically five five people on the dragon so uh, the enemy team has traded for the Rift Herald uh, honestly a really good trade uh, for the enemy team considering that their bot lane died and they basically couldn't contest dragon so the fact that they got Rift Herald out of it is really good so of course uh, observing some of the 2.4 changes wherein um, you can actually trade Rift Herald for dragon so they have more pressure uh, against my team to get the uh, first uh, first tower of the game because the Rift Herald is going to be helping out a, a ton when it comes to that. So here of course I am running out of mana already just because of how long I've stayed in lane. So I'm going to have to recall to get myself uh, uh, more mana and also we clear out the wave so no point in sticking around. We are going to pick up our boots. Uh... Actually, we are not. We are not gonna pick up our boots. We're gonna pick up a BF sword instead. Uh, if I can afford the BF sword, I'll go for BF sword instead of boots. Because uh, in lane, honestly, in lane, boots may not necessarily be the most important. That slight bit of movement speed sometimes will actually matter. Will actually count, but sometimes it won't. So I rather just go for more damage. So I actually pick up a BF sword instead, just for the huge injection of AD. So of course, Varus, sticking to his game plan of just generally poking uh, us out. That's Varus's entire game plan, is just play the poke game. Uh, as you can see, he's doing a relatively good job of that. Unfortunately for him, he is he only has a mana mute at the moment, so he's not doing too much damage. Here, of course, I'm trying to get up as much harass onto the Seraphine as possible whenever I can. Um, as Illusion, you always want to play aggressive and harass uh, enemies in lane. Uh, this is simply due to the fact that Lucian has a strong early to mid game, whereas most ADCs don't have such a strong early to mid game. Maybe with a po some possible exceptions like Draven and Kaisa. Here, Varus over stats, gets hit by the Nami bubble, hit, yeah, hit, gets hit by the Nami wave, and basically gets destroyed. I put the majority of my culling onto the Seraphine and managed to pick up the kill with my, uh, with my passive, uh, even though I got charmed into the tower. So, um... For his ultimate, it's really important. Of course, obviously, it's really important to hit the ultimate. But before we get to that, I really coming trying to trying to trying to uh, pull off some stunts. But Pantheon uh, comes uh, in on it. I saw the Pantheon. Uh, I saw the Irelia coming. We're gonna sandwich the Irelia. So I'm, I cancelled my recall so that me and the Pantheon can collapse on the Irelia. Really important to adapt to the situation. You don't want to fully challenge your recall. And just go back to base when Pantheon is coming in to help you with the Irela. It'll just become a one v one where it could go either way. Whereas if I stuck around and I was still like basically nearly full health, I we we could definitely secure the kill on the Irelia. Of course, I burned the flash to get the kill on the Irelia, but it's worth. I now have my Infinity Edge and my boots as well. So back to my point on Lucian's ultimate. Of course it's important to hit its ultimate, that is common sense. But if you manage to hit all your ultimate, it actually does more damage than uh, your, your combo. So it does the most DPS if you hit your entire ultimate. If you are missing it or if you're... Uh, yeah, if you're missing it or if you can't hit it despite dashing or, or, or whatnot, it is better just to cancel your ultimate, use the, the passive prop of your ultimate and then go into the rest of your combo where you can guarantee um, damage instead of just struggling to aim your ultimate. Because your ultimate, even for the best Lucian players, in some situations it's really hard to just hit your ultimate just uh, because of the angles or just because of you know the situation that you're in. It's, it's not always very easy to hit your ultimate. So... That's just something to take note. Yeah, Yasuo comes in and Nami actually commits ultimate. But honestly, they were already under tower. There really wasn't much we could do here. Um, it was a really, really strange gank by the Yasuo because the enemies weren't really in position to get ganked. So we basically just lost the Nami ultimate and a bit of resources like health and all. So here we can of course see Fizz in the area. He's sweeping out the dragon area. Uh, which of course the dragon is coming up so they're sort of setting up for the dragon however because they're, they pushed in the lane i'm forced to actually just clear up the lane of course i can do that with one q at the moment just because of how fat i am um so it is uh, not too big of a problem for me but here of course my team is playing for dragon rengar is not really in the vicinity he's actually at the red buff and recalling at the moment so here i'm gonna actually get priority by trying to push out this lane i believe oh uh, actually i get into a bit of a skirmish with the varus but yeah, we push the Varus away, and here Nami actually gets caught. I actually get caught as well. Uh, I actually managed to barrier the damage and get off the culling onto the Varus as he's trying to chase me. And Pantheon actually comes in to clean up the kill. I'm 
relatively sure if Pendant didn't come in there, I probably probably would have died. But yeah, that was uh, quite nicely played by me. The Bearer protected me from the majority of the initial damage, uh, as well as the Seraphine passive and the Electrocute as well. And I managed to get off the defensive culling. So one thing you can do is if enemies are chasing you, it's really a lot easier to hit the culling because they're going to be running at your face and they're going to be eating all that culling damage. As you saw with the Varus, I was 1 HP so he was tr definitely trying to chase uh, chase me for, for the kill. So I, I could get off like basically my entire culling right onto his face. Here, we're just, uh, we quickly just swap bot and just quickly push out this tower. So here it's a neat little trick, quickly just running to the opposite lane and getting the tower. So of course now we're actually going to go back to the lane that we're supposed to be going. So we're of course going to be pinging that we're going back there. So here this allows us to secure the tower. Uh, unfortunately it's not the first tower of the game because our bot tower actually fell already. Uh, which is, you know, it's unfortunate. But the enemy team um, did have the rift tower of course. So it honestly not too much you can do to avoid that. Yeah. So we're gonna come back to top. Pantheon goes in. Nami ultimate splits up the the, the the pair of them, and we managed to get off the double kill on them, uh, like more or less under tower. So really, really nicely played by by us with the Pantheon and Nami out combo. The the uh, Varus and Seraphine actually split up, uh, and Varus went the wrong direction, which is out of his tower range. So he was dead to right. Um, Seraphine was low health, could easily get dove on by the Pantheon, so she was dead. So really, really nice. Uh, honestly, the, the enemy bot lane is sort of getting stomped. Irela runs into all four of us for some reason, and she dies as well. Prior to this, the Irela wasn't actually doing too bad. Uh, before me and the Fenton kill her for the first time and here for the second time, the Irela probably doing the best on their team because the entire rest of the team more or less um, not doing too good. So here, of course, when we have downtime, we want to farm the jungle. Even better if, if we can farm the enemy's jungle instead of our own jungle. Uh, so... Um, that's of course even better. Here I have actually picked up the Zhonya's Hourglass. Now the reason for that is that even though uh, technically there are two assassins which is Fizz and Diana. So that is the first reason. Secondly, when ever there's a Fizz or a Zed, you generally want to pick up the Zhonya's Hourglass because it basically invalidates their ultimate. Because uh, if Fizz ults you, you Zhonya's. If Zed ults you, Zhonya's. It basically removes their ultimate from them. Like um, I wouldn't say for free because you have to spend your Zhonya's cooldown. But it can it is really really useful to protect you from those ultimates of course which I'm sure everybody already knows by now. And here uh, I cancelled my recall to pick up more farms so I can pick up the Sorelda's Grudge. So there on you will see the interaction with the slow on the Sorelda's Grudge. Here on the red buff you can see that there is a IC um, passive applied onto the red buff already. Whenever I cast my abilities. So uh, you guys will see that. So here, Rengar just goes in, you know, Rengar does Rengar things, one-shots the Varus, Penton even ults in uh, as well, but it's not needed. So here, I'm actually pinging to, to go for Baron. D not just because of how far our team uh, is ahead, it, we're more than 10k ahead of the enemy team. Of course, we can't see that in-game, uh, the exact goal, uh, goal lead, but we can uh, easily tell that we are way ahead of the enemy team, so... We can easily force the Baron, especially when you have just gotten the pick onto the Varus. Uh, honestly, nothing really much the enemy team can do. Um, they can't even contest, and we managed to pick up the easy Baron. The enemy team actually suspects something's happening, and they actually come for the contest, but we have already picked up the Baron, so now we can just get the collapse onto the enemy team. Now, Fizz, of course, going to the back line. Uh, he, he's Zanyas, and Gasol is going to be chasing him. I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to... Uh, Go back to the to the main fight where I can see the uh, Irelia, Irelia there. I'm gonna go to the mid lane, push out the mid lane. Of course, we have Baron buff now, so we are gonna get a nice push everywhere. Dragon is coming up as well, so we of course want to use our pressure to pick up the the dragon as well. So here I'm of course posturing towards the dragon, picking up some fruit to restore my mana, and just gonna be doing the dragon with the Pantheon. Of course, running over the wall to make sure there are no shenanigans happening with the enemy team. Um, at this point in time, of course, we are uh, really, really fed. Um, so, yeah, so here, uh, here is where you see it. Here, I get off my combo. And here, you can see the entire culling onto the Irelia. She really cannot escape just because of the slow. She was definitely trying to run, but she probably didn't, probably didn't notice how badly she was getting slowed. That she just simply could not run. So, 
that really helps you to apply the entire culling, which is the highest damaging ability that you have. So that's why Serelda's Grudge is really good on Lucian. So here we pick up the enemies. In hit, I'm aggressively dashing in to try to pick up any more kills or damage, but we have a wave at top. So I'm just going to rotate over to top, apply the Baron buff to the minions, and pick up this uh, top tower. In the meantime, Rengar counter jungling them, getting as much resources as he can. Here I picked up the tier 2 tower. I don't want to uh, push any much further because it's of course dangerous when the entire rest of my team is not really around. Rengar decides to go in by himself though and he pays the price by dying. So if, if I went in by myself there to push the tower, that would have been me basically. So uh, he gives a shutdown over to the Fizz. Um, not really the best news for us. Uh, I pick, I'm going to take uh, the red buff just because I'm, of course I'm really fat and I'm going to do really well with the red buff. Of course, it's picking up the, the jungle farm uh, just on the way to, uh, you know, basically doing anything. Rengar, really interesting build with the uh, uh, Navari Quick Blades. Here, as you guys can see, Zanya's the Fizz, uh, the Fizz uh, uh, ultimate. And here, just in the flash over, get the kill under the Fizz. Turn around to get the kill onto the Irelia. And the Diana is here as well. So, of course, she just gives me a triple kill. Doesn't really do too much. Doesn't really achieve too much here. I can see two more people. So, what do I do? Of course, I'm going to be dashing in, going for that, that uh, the Quadra, the Penta. But unfortunately, the timer has expired, so I don't actually get any Quadra. And if, uh, if there was a Penta, it got stolen by Pantheon. So, here, of course, easy victory to the game. So, this is how strong Lucian is in the new patch. Uh, honestly, Lucian gets banned a decent amount uh, in the new patch, so we're just gonna take a quick look at the stats. Of course, uh, 1105, I'm the MVP uh, with all the awards, more or less, except for the. Uh, yep, so also with the most uh, damage taken. So, yep, uh, with that, thanks for watching the video, guys, and goodbye.